All right, so we're gonna talk about oil painting today. Um, these are the colors right here that you're probably going to need if you're doing a portrait at least. Um, white is going to be your brightest of all your highlights. Naples yellow is going to be pretty standard for every skin tone. You're gonna to want Naples yellow as, as one of your basic highlight colors. Um, yellow ochre is going to be sort of, if, if you need something to go more yellow, not everybody will. Burnt sienna is a really nice warm orangey brown. Burnt umber is a little bit of a darker, less intense, less warm brown. And your raw umber is going to be your darkest, uh, coolest brown. Then to make sure that you don't look corpsey, we use cad red to sort of make it look like there's some blood under your skin. And cad orange is a really, cad stands for cadmium, by the way. We just say cad. Cad orange is a really great um, transition color. So when you're going from lights to darks, you're gonna use some cat orange. So I already have most of those right here in this container. And I like to use these. We get them in our cafeteria at school. And um, if you get a little bit of paint in here, you can just sort of keep it for a week, maybe two weeks before it starts to dry out as long as you keep the cap on it every day. Uh, you don't have to separate it here like this. Manny did that for me. But uh, here you can see that I mixed some hair colors over there. Over here I've got a little bit of a basic skin tone that I've started with. So, um, but here's my uh, Naples yellow, my white, my burnt sienna, my raw umber. I've got a little bit of ultramarine because my portrait has blue eyes. Alizarin crimson, which actually should be on this and Mr. Overcash never uses it, but I do a lot. So you might want to use alizarin crimson as well. Here's that yellow ochre, the cad red, which actually looks really orange. So if you need something that's more red, that's why the alizarin crimson is there. And then way over here in this corner is some cad orange. So I'm going to move that off to the side. For now, we're just going to talk about how we um, get started on our base layer of a painting. So what I've done here is... Um, gotten a, a gessoed surface and I went ahead and put just a background on it but we're gonna paint over the entire thing I just don't like to paint on plain plain white I like to have something down first um, for me personally for this particular project I went ahead and traced my image on there with um, a red transfer paper so that I could see it when it came through and then if you are not sure what colors to use when you get started this book is going to be invaluable to you. Color mixing recipes. Um, it will show you skin tones that you can use. So you can look at the portrait that you're painting, compare it to the colors that you see on each page and sort of decide based on that, what your basic color scheme is going to be and how to get to your light values or middle values and your darker values. Does that make sense? This also will show you, it, it's basically just a recipe book. I see you looking a little confused right here, so if I wanna get this, this is two parts white and a speck of the master recipe, which is up here. Um, once you get your skin tones, you can also use this book to find your eye colors, as well as different kinds of hair color. Like that, okay? So that'll be available to you. For my basic underpainting, I don't necessarily go by one of these. Um, really strongly anyway. I just want to get my values down first. So I just use um, mostly the Naples yellow and white for my highlights. And then I use mostly burnt sienna and a little bit of raw umber. I'm recording. And a little bit of raw umber for my uh, darks. Mostly burnt sienna for my darks and my underpainting. And then I do like to bring it to life a little bit with the cad orange and the cad red. So this guy right here, this sort of like makeup-y color is going to be what I call my master recipe. It's just sort of like an in-between that could go towards highlights or shadows. And it's just a mixture, mixture of those four colors, the, the red, the brown, the white, and the yellow. So they're just a, a, just a little bit of a mixture of those. And you'll find out that the red is really, really strong and it comes up harsh all of a sudden. You can make things really red or orangey if you're not careful. Um, but the yellow and the white, not quite so much. It takes a little bit more of those to lighten things up. So remember from painting acrylics that different paints have different sort of strengths. Um, I'm gonna pull this down towards me. All right, so I like to get started on the nose and I've got a bunch of different brushes here, like this. 
I like to have a variety of brushes. Um, this is called a filbert. It's sort of round around the edges. And I've got some tiny little detail brushes over here. You don't need two of those. This is an angled brush. Some of you might like that one better. Um, these are just, just I, I don't know what those are called, round brushes, I suppose. But those I use mostly for dry brushing, for smoothing things out. And then, these are all um, sable bristle brushes, by the way. They're sort of soft when you touch them. And then I have this guy right here. This is a boar bristle brush. You'll see it's a little bit more of a, a sturdy bristle. And I like to use that when I'm blending. So um, when I want, when I put my, my colors down and I want them to sort of blend together a little bit better, I'll use that brush when it's completely dry and it'll help the colors sort of blend. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And I like to use just sort of a medium sized brush to begin with. And when I look at my, and I'm going to look at my, this, as I'm, as I'm painting, I'm going to often reference my picture so that I know that I'm putting down the right values and the right colors. Um, let's go ahead and start with our highlight down the nose. The highlights aren't going to show up super bright right now because I've got sort of a light surface, but as I, as I start to add the darker values, they make more of an appearance. So if you have already painted before with acrylics, you're gonna fall in love with oil because they're like butter. They stay wet for the entire block. And they blend together so, so, so easily. Brown on the outside. And see how the edges just kind of feather away? Super easy to paint with. A little bit of paint in my brush if I put down like a lighter color it will start to appear darker already did you see how I just all I did was dip into the the yellow but because I had just been painting with the brown it comes up a little bit darker if you want to avoid that you can rinse out your brush with your paint thinner and these little jars this is just a baby food jar and you can tell this one's been used a lot but my kids just started feeding baby food so I'll probably start bringing in more jars like this but um, you can always just pick up a jar of baby food for like 50 cents at the store if you want to, and then you always have your own paint thinner. I'll try to bring enough in for everybody, but it'll take a while to build up that much. Okay, let's talk about eyes briefly. Um, the whites of your eyes are rarely white. So you can see right here, I've got a little bit of a gray mixed up. And I'm gonna put gray to end. It's hard to tell because my background's kind of gray, but I'll start with a little bit of a gray. And the way I mixed my gray was with that ultramarine blue and then a little bit of a dark brown. 
um, uh, the umber is what I use. So here, and the, um, the ultramarine and the umber, and then I added a little bit of white to that until I got the value that I wanted. And it's going to be darker near the top if you've got normal. Got um, the eye. So I've got a little bit of. Um, for me, I just use a little bit of ultramarine with some. Uh, ochre and and maples I'm just going to lightly put that in in the eye because you never want to put just one color down oh, it looks silly I just took the same color and added a little bit of maples to it over here and we'll just kind of add highlight to it I found that if you've got roughly three values in anything that needs to show value, it will be nearly sufficient. That's good for my first layer. Then I'm going to want to do um, the pupil, which is black, and again, ultramarine and umber. One thing that I've done here is I've got really sharp edges around that eye. Well, looks weird. It's too sharp compared to the softness of the skin, and I really dislike that. So, going to want to. Oh, yeah, maybe I'll finish the the waterline too. These really sharp lines aren't doing me any favors. So what I'm going to want to do then is get a small, dry, clean brush. This is not. Smallish dry clean brush and just sort of feather the edges a bit. softly feather the edge between the two. There, you can see we've got that nice soft edge now. Nothing's too harsh. So, this is kind of your first layer. If you'll go behind the fish tank right there, I've got a finished copy of the first layer. So when you finish a first layer, it'll look something like that. See how everything's nice and soft and, and oh, I, it, maybe that's just my aesthetic and if you really hate it, you don't have to do it that way. I just find that when two edges meet too sharply, things get a little dicey. Um, but if you'll notice here, I started on the second layer and you can see that you don't see through it quite as much as you do over here. This is a little bit like denser in color and that's what you're looking for in the end is something that looks intentional where here it still feels a bit see-through so when you go to add your value back on top Um, then the other thing I want you to do when you clean brushes, because brushes are a really important part of creating paintings, you want to have decent brushes, you want to keep them nice. First thing is, eventually, they do get nasty, because you'll work with them, they're, they're classroom brushes, 
um, you want to make sure that you're taking really good care of them. So you see how I dip it in a paint thinner and just sort of wipe it across the edge of my container like this? That keeps me from smashing the brush down in the bottom, which is something that I see a lot of kids do, especially you start doing that like in elementary school, it makes it really fast and easy to get everything out of the brush, but you ruin the brush in the process. So I try and get most of the paint out just by gently tapping it against the edge like that, wiping it against the edge. When it runs clear, I just sort of um, clean it with my paper towel like this. And you want to make sure that you've got a nice brush when you're done. Sort of reshape it with your fingers. And then when you put it away, make sure you put it bristle side up. If you put it bristle side down, again, the brushes will sort of smash over, or the bristles will smash over, and then they nobody will want to use that brush anymore. So this is what happens after a brush has been used a lot. They sort of fray up at the top. And that's not the end of a brush if that happens. Eventually it will happen to all the brushes, but this becomes a really nice brush to do sort of your, your dry brushing with, not, not your application. So I can come back in and do some blending with that brush. Yeah? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Those edges nice and feathered. See how it sort of feathers out there like that? Mm. Like buttery. All right, for eyelashes, you're just going to want to get whatever color you're using for your your eyelashes. I like to do it with like a dark color. I'll do it with like a burnt umber, I guess. And I'm going to add a good bit of paint thinner to it so that it thins out. And kind of maybe I'll add a little bit of some red hair color to it so it's not perfectly, perfectly dark. Okay, and the reason you want a lot of paint thinner on there is because you just want it to glide on really smooth. That will lengthen them a little bit as well as soften them. If you get some paint on there, just kind of wipe it off. 